Hey guys, I'm going to update you on my finding a new tennis racket series of videos. For you guys that don't know, it all started with me painting my old Babolat Pure Drive Plus white. And this led to thousands of comments asking me, Nick, what's the white racket you're playing with? Which then led me to, after a while, make the white racket reveal video where in fact I revealed that this is my old racket, the Babolat Pure Drive Plus. Unfortunately, while this is probably the best racket that I've ever played with, I cannot play with it anymore. And this leads me to the complexity of switching rackets and players getting used to certain rackets. So I'm going to tell you what has been happening. I can't play with this racket anymore because it's a lot heavier since I painted it. But I have some versions of this racket that are not painted and 99% of the rackets that I tested are regular length 27 inches this happens to be 27 and a half inches and I find myself not being able to maneuver 27 and a half inches as well as I used to so my preferences have shifted a little bit towards the 27 inch length so now when I grab my old pure drive plus I am still serving well with it. I think this is the best serve racket in the history of rackets. There's no comparison to how my serve feels with the Pure Drive Plus compared to any other racket. It's still the best, no doubt about it. However, from the baseline, because I've gotten used to some of these other rackets that are more maneuverable, that are standard length, I'm playing much better from the baseline with some of these other rackets and I'm playing much worse with my old Babolat Pure Drive Plus. So I don't necessarily like the Pure Drive Plus anymore. For you guys that think I'm having fun testing all these rackets, it might look like that, but I'm actually not having fun. And this is quite a nightmare process that I'm going through. The last time I switched rackets, which was in 2016, it took me six months to find a new racket. So this might take a while. This might go into 2025. I don't know. It's very difficult to find the right balance with a racket. So throughout this series, I've had the rackets that were great for my forehand, for example, but they didn't feel that great on my serve. I've had rackets that were great for my two-handed backhand, but they didn't really feel good on my forehand and my serve. So to find a racket where all strokes feel good, that's going to be a big challenge. So I'm willing to compromise feel and specialty shots. I might be able to compromise my backhand to some extent, but I definitely want to find a racket with which I can serve well and hit good forehands. And have I found it yet? Not quite. But the fact is that right now I can't really play with any rackets. I am at a complete loss, okay? I'm racketless in other words. And I very badly want to find one that I like, but I always find something to complain about, which leads me to one of the most important things that I learned throughout this process, which is how tennis rackets can affect your mental game. So I recently played a practice set against a younger guy that's just finished playing Division I college. And since I'm racketless, I had my old racket. I had the Onyx Percept and I had the Wilson Shift with me on the court. And I didn't really know which racket to play with, to be honest with you. So I started playing the match with the Wilson Shift because I did like this racket in my play test. And I started playing really well. I was receiving first and I was making returns. I was taking full cuts from the baseline. Balls were going in. I broke serve. I then held serve with hitting good first serves. I even hit one ace. I even hit one inside out forehand winner on game point. I'm up to love. Now I'm receiving again. I'm continuing to return well and I'm taking big cuts and balls are going in. Now I'm up three love. Two breaks, I'm serving, it's 15 all, and I miss a forehand a little bit long, no big deal, 15-30. I hit a great serve and I have a high forehand, a shot that I normally make, and I make a horrendous mistake. I spray this ball way out, and instead of blaming my footwork, my shot selection, or my technique, I immediately blame the rack. And what do I do? I tell myself that I can't play with the shift, and I'm going to play with my older racket because the shift is responsible for me being down 1540 on my serve. So I take my old racket and this racket right now feels absolutely horrendous, especially on the return game. So I'm having a hard time keeping the ball in play and I end up losing this game. Now it's 3-2 and I'm serving and I decide, you know what, both of these rackets are terrible. Now I'm going to play with the Percept 
and I did play really well with the Percept in my playtest video, but to be 100% honest with you, it hasn't really felt as good as that particular day recently. And even in the match yesterday, the Percept did not feel great, but I started playing a little bit better. I held serve, was up 4-2. Again, continued to struggle on the return game, 4-3. I hold serve again with some decent serving. I'm up 5-3 and I again don't return well and now it's 5-4. I'm serving for the set. So what do I do? I say, you know what? I'm not feeling this percept. Let me go back to the Wilson shift and that turns into an absolute disaster. Now I can't get any serves into play. I even serve a double fault. At 15 all, I then proceed to finish the match with the Wilson shift, not playing well, end up losing in the tie break. So it is 100% true that it's not the racket, it's the player. There is not a lot of difference between these rackets, but mentally it is very challenging to tune the racket out of your game. And that's exactly what I want to do. I don't want to think about rackets anymore. And some of you might be thinking, Nick, what does it matter? You can barely move on the court. You played college tennis 40 years ago. And that's an excellent point, but I still enjoy to play. I enjoy to play points or matches. And I want to have a racket where I'm not thinking about the racket. I just want to enjoy the game without having these thoughts in my head. And this is why this series is a legitimate attempt for me to find a racket that's suitable for my game. Now, of course, you can try to tune the racket out and just accept the racket that you're playing with. But that's one of those things that's easier said than done. So the connection between rackets and player's mental game is very nuanced. See, it's absolutely true that big differences in racket specs can make a big difference in your game. Let's say that you're playing with a racket that's 270 grams unstrung versus a racket that's 330 grams unstrung. You're going to play different when the specs are so far apart. However, when the specs are very close together, the differences are going to be much smaller. However, we as players, even if there's a five gram difference in the frame, we're going to exaggerate that in our mind. And anytime something goes wrong on the court, we're going to immediately blame the racket. Therein lies the challenge. Now I'm going to get to a very interesting thing that happened to me on the court later in this video. So stay tuned. But first, let me quickly update you on the series because I'm going to disregard some rackets that I did select. So in part one, I tested the Bolt, the Technifiber, and I tested the Yonex E-Zone. In that video, I selected the Bolt B100 V2 and the Technifiber TF-X1 300 gram for my final playtest video. So let me grab those two rackets real quick. And while these two rackets are great rackets, with the Bolt, I didn't feel enough power. I felt really good control, but the racket is just a tad too dampened for me. And the uh, TF-X1 is the exact opposite. There is a tremendous amount of power, but not enough control. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to disregard both the Technifiber and the Bolt for my final playtest video. Those two rackets are out. Now, in part two, I selected the RF Future. I don't have that racket here, but that one's going to stay. I did like that one a lot. In part three, I tested the Shift and I did buy this racket. When it comes to selecting rackets, this is not about a sponsorship. This is a legitimate attempt for me to find a racket that I'm gonna go out and purchase like everybody else. So the shift stays. This is a racket that I did like a lot. Now, in part four, I tested the Diadem Nova rackets. And it's very interesting because the Diadem Nova rackets are very similar to the Babolat Pure Drive in specs and in the mold and the thickness of the beam. And especially the Nova Plus is very similar to the racket that I used to use, which is the Pure Drive Plus. However, I gave this racket a legitimate chance. I played many sets with it. I tried to like it because the company Diadem has been great to me. They did send me these rackets and this is a company headquartered very close to where I live. And this would have been a perfect match, but I have to be honest, unfortunately, this racket is similar to the Pure Drive Plus, but not quite the same because it's more dampened. And I gave it a legitimate chance, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to disregard the Nova Plus for my final play test video. Then in part five, I tested the Blades, which was an absolute disaster. In part six, I tested the Percept 100, and I did like this one a lot. In part seven, I tested the Speed, which was an absolute disaster. I have tested 
three other rackets. These videos are going to come out shortly on YouTube, but you can check them out on Intuitive Tennis Premium. Just go to intuitivetennis.com or you can get the Intuitive Tennis app and you can watch those videos. And now I'm going to share an interesting story that relates to this video, how rackets can play mental tricks on us players. So if you remember my play test with the Yonex Percep, you know that I played well. I said in this video that this is one of the best rackets that I've ever played with, and it's definitely true. I love the Percep racket. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I continue to play with this racket, and it hasn't felt quite as good as on that day. So I might have just had a great day on that particular day, I was playing well. But something interesting happened in that video that I didn't share. I cut a whole portion of that video out because I made a horrible mistake. So if you remember that playtest, I had four Percep rackets. I had the 97H, the 97D, the 97, and the 100. And the one that I liked the least was the 97D. Okay. I'm not even going to try with this one. Now, I had read the specs beforehand, and those specs are generally ones that I disregard. A tighter string pattern, the racket was too heavy, and so on. So after playing just a few points with the 97D, I disregarded it and I said that this racket did not feel good at all. I didn't like the 97H either, I disregarded that one and I was going to swap between the 100 and the 97 to see which one of those I like best. But I made a horrible mistake because I accidentally grabbed the 97D and played points with it. Now you would think that I would have played horrible, but no. I proceeded to play some of the best tennis that I've played in the last six years since going on YouTube. I was on absolute fire. I wasn't missing anything. I was taking huge cuts. I was serving well, returning well, coming to the net, cleaning up at the net. And I look down on the racket and I see this can't be possible. This is the 97D. So I unknowingly grabbed the 97D, did not feel the difference in the racket, and I proceeded to play some of the best tennis that I've ever played. And this goes to show you that rackets can play mind tricks on us. This led me to make a video where I blind tested rackets. Again, this video is available on intuitivetennis.com. It's gonna come out on YouTube in a few weeks. So the lessons that I've learned from this play test is that there is gonna be a racket for me that's gonna be optimal. But I'm also recognizing that I can very easily psych myself out. I can get preconceived notions of a racket beforehand I have to keep more of an open mind. And something came to my mind that happened eight years ago when I switched from my Hyperhammer 5.2 and it was the following. I'd played with an older version of the Pure Drive Plus, which had the Cortex system on the outside, if you remember. So the updated model, I think it came out in 2017, had the Cortex system on the inside. So the Pure Drive Plus from a couple of years before was a little bit stiffer. That model that came after was a little bit dampened. And I remember after trying rackets for six months at least, finally settling on the Pure Drive Plus, loving it. Then a new model came out, I tried it, and I initially hated it because it felt different. It was a little bit more dampened. However, I will not forget that after just being kind of forced to play with the newer model, I eventually got used to it and I started preferring the 2017 model over the 2015 model. So this story, I'm gonna tell myself as I continue to play with the shift, for example, or the percept that on some days, this racket might not feel optimal, but I just have to toughen it out and just stick with it. So to summarize, the rackets that are in consideration right now is the percept 100, the shift 300 gram, and it's the RF future. And I'm gonna add two more rackets to this list. So. The play testing is going to continue. I want to find one racket actually because there's another one in a video that I haven't released yet that I really liked. It was the best serve racket out of all the rackets that I tested. So that one's going to go in there. So I'm basically looking for one more racket to feature in the final play test video. And there I'm going to finally select a new racket.